Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. I want to say happy Mother's Day, first of all. Isn't it a beautiful Mother's Day? Thank God for the weather that we have. Uh, the sun is shining. The temperature is just right. And uh, we, uh, I just want to thank everybody for uh, always participating. we got a great number today, as we have been, and continue to spread the word. Uh, we're going to continue to have uh, our drive-in services as long as the weather is going to permit because of the restrictions indoors. Uh, just uh, we and a lot of feedback from different individuals. We feel like that this is the best thing to do, and plus we can't fit everybody inside with the restrictions that are there as well. That or uh, when the number gets up greater, so we want to definitely not restrict that. Uh, last week, I just want to make mention of our building fund. Our building fund was back down to basically uh, nothing. Uh, we didn't have a whole lot in building fund left, uh, but the offering last week uh, totaled $5,045. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. I added to that someone had given me a $1,000 $1, check last week so god is god is good uh, i also want to thank everybody for uh their birthday wishes thank you for the gifts and such that that uh you gave and the, and the wishes uh, for my birthday thank you very very much uh and, and yes I, i'll probably look my age now with this whiskers and everything uh we do have um tanya uh, hopefully on the uh radio transmission uh this morning so if you want to uh, dial that in, you can. If you don't want to, that's fine too. Uh, but that's 87.9. 87.9 will be that frequency on the AM, I mean the FM, excuse me, the FM station. 87.9. But we're going to uh, open up with prayer and just ask the Lord to have his way. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for the privilege, Lord, to be uh, Lord here. Lord, you said where two or three are gathered, there you are in the midst of them. And we thank you, Lord, that you are here. We thank you, Lord, that you're moving. We thank you, Lord, that we can worship you out here as well as we can inside. And Father, we just ask that you would overtake in this service. May everything that is done bring you glory and honor and praise. Father, we just ask that you would anoint the, the words. Lord, anoint every voice as it's lifted to you in praise. Lord, anoint, Lord, your word as it goes forth, Lord, and your servant. Father, we just give this service to you. We give you our time. Father, we just ask that you would speak to our hearts, and may we give you worship that is due your name, in Jesus' name. And they all said, amen. amen. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. Um, if you got a voice or you got hands, stick them out the windows. We can hear your amens. You just have to shout them a little louder. So uh, let's praise him this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, thank you.
Savior came and he took the blame. He changed everything. Since the Savior came and he took the blame, he changed everything.
praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's see if I can get this thing. We had to kind of rig that where she could come through the radio there, but I think it maybe worked. Hallelujah. It's good to be in the Lord's house. Hallelujah. We're standing. We're standing. We're sitting on holy ground. Hallelujah. Nothing like being in God's presence. And, and yeah, if you... Uh, when I'm preaching, boy, to help me out real good, if you give me a big wave like my brother's doing back there, saying, amen, I believe you, or you, if you've got a big mouth like I do, you can say amen and I'll hear you. <laughs> but we're going to have a good time of praising the Lord and worshiping him. I do want to say as well, uh, is everybody hearing me okay? Hear me fine? Okay. I, I do want to say as well, we do have some more grocery bags uh, that are available inside. If you want one, hang around just a little while afterwards, and we'll get it to you. We'll bring it out to your car, so you can't beat that. Uh, we'll have it already sacked for you. So, uh, But if you'd like to take part of that, just hang around after service. Uh, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Luke, the 23rd chapter. Luke 23 and verse number 50. Thank you, Jesus. Luke 23 and verse number 50. Well, I hear somebody amen to me already. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need some of that. Luke 23 and verse number 50. It reads, And behold, there was a man named Joseph, a counselor, and he was a good man and a just. The same had not consented to the counsel and the deeds of them. He was of Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who also himself waited for the kingdom of God, or secretly he was a disciple of Jesus. This man went unto Pilate and begged the body of Jesus and took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulcher and uh, that was hewn in stone, wherein never before man was laid. And that day was the preparation day, and the Sabbath drew on. And the women also, notice we're talking about Mother's Day, so our focus is, is kind of on our ladies. But And the women also which came with him from Galilee followed after and beheld the sepulcher and how his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. Hallelujah. Preaching from the title today, A Woman's Faithfulness. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for the privilege to have sung your praises. We thank you for the privilege, Lord, to lift our hands and worship you and to thank you for what you've done, what you're doing and what you're going to do. And Father, I just ask that you would anoint in this word I just pray that you would use it, Lord, to find rest in each and every heart today. Father, may it just speak loudly. And Father, I just ask for your anointing to be able to do so. Your anointing to flow right now, we ask in Jesus' name. And God's people said, amen, amen. and amen. Hallelujah. Uh, today is a very um, wonderful day in that we remember mamas. Maybe your mother has went on to be with the Lord. Uh, or maybe you're here that you've never been uh, a, a mother yourself, but uh, really I'm, I'm encapsulating um, women in general, but uh, mothers are special. Mothers are a special breed. And, and uh, without this component, without women within the church, uh, we would not be as healthy as a body. We would not be as strong as a body for all of these years. And, and since Jesus' death and before, God has been calling women to a special place to do a special work. And they have been coming. They have been answering the call day after day, year after year. Women have been answering that call that the Lord has been given out. And today we're going to look and see how uh, uh, that this has transpired uh, in Jesus' time, in Jesus' day. Uh, first of all, when it came to standing with Jesus, we find that women were very devoted. Women were very devoted to Jesus. 
That word devoted means very loving or loyal. Very loving or loyal. We hear mention of the disciples walking with Jesus wherever they went. But because of the lack of emphasis on women in the Bible and in biblical times, we don't hear the women mentioned a lot of times. So a lot of times when you see the disciples went with him, the disciples were there, the disciples were over here, uh, uh, we don't see mention of women in, in, in those instances so many times when women were actually there. So think about that as you're reading the Word of God. Uh, the, the shepherd Jesus during this time had been smitten. He had been, uh, um, he had been taken to be crucified, and all the disciples ran. But where were the women? Where were the women? Luke 23 and verse number 26 lets us in on where the women were. Luke 23 and verse 26 says, And as they led him away, they laid hold on one Simon, a Cyrenian, coming out of the country, and on him they laid the cross, that he might bear it after Jesus. And there followed him, following the cross, there followed him a great company of people and of women which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning unto them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Verse 49. And all his acquaintance and the women that followed him from Galilee stood far off beholding these things. That was as Jesus was being crucified. Verse 55. And the women also which came with him from Galilee followed after and beheld the sepulcher and how his body was laid. Do you get the picture? The women were with him at the first and then all the way through the process. They were with him through the, uh, they were with him through the, uh, before the cross and as he was leading to be, uh, uh, you know, crucified or led to be crucified and they were there when he was laid in the ground as well. The women have been with him through all the process from cross to grave. He couldn't manage to get three of his 12 disciples. And now I'm not, I'm not trying to down the fellows, but I'm, I'm trying to draw an emphasis on the ladies here and, and their rightful place in the word of God. Uh, three of his disciples wouldn't even stay awake for him when, they, when he prayed, right? These are three of the guys. And they wouldn't even stay awake as he prayed. One said, spoke of even dying for him just moments before. Lord will die for you. Peter said that. And then a lot of the other disciples piped up and said, yeah, me too, me too. I'm in on that. But here Jesus is smitten. And as he said, what Jesus was doing, but all they understood was they needed to be by his side. How many understands when somebody's going through a hard time, sometimes we don't need to say anything at all, but just be alongside of them. Just be there walking with them. And the women were there. They were devoted uh, uh, to the Lord. You see, there's just something within women. There's just something that God has given them. There's a definite high sense of devotion that is within them that keeps them from being uprooted even in some of the most troubling times when people are going through things. Maybe it, it, it helped that these women remembered one of Jesus' teachings. As I began to think on this, maybe, maybe they remembered one of his teachings and because uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Matthew 5, 41 says, Whosoever shall compel thee to go one mile, Jesus said, go with him what? Go with him two. They heard this teaching. If you're compelled to go one mile, go two. Now, uh, many may not know this, but this was Roman law. That if a, a, a Roman said, uh, to a Jew, uh, I want you to carry my stuff one mile. And under law, under Roman law, because the, the Roman had the, the Romans had the rule in that day, and, and, and they would carry the stuff for one mile under Roman law. If a soldier then, for instance, uh, told just like he told uh, Simon the Cyrenian, carry carry this uh, cross. If he was asked to go a mile, he, he better do it under the command of law. But Jesus said, even when you're doing something by, uh, for a so-called enemy, he said, don't just go one mile, go two. Isn't that awesome? 
I mean, that is above and beyond. He says, don't just go one mile with them. I, I, I know, you know, things are the way that they are right now, but don't just go one mile, go two. So uh, this is where we get the phrase, going the extra mile. Going the extra mile. The Lord was instilling within his disciples, church, even during this time, a sense of loyalty. As he's uh, speaking this word, he's, as he said, don't just go one, go two miles. He was instilling within them a sense of loyalty. If one goes this far for the enemy, how far will one go for one who he, whom he or she loves? He was instilling within them that, that faith and that, and that uh, devotion uh, that they should have. The Lord has called each of us to be loving. He's called each of us to be loyal. Sometimes we don't have to understand. As the song says, we just need to hold his hand, don't we? We just need to be faithful. We need to do what he's asked us to do. Don't only go one mile, but go two. Go above and beyond. Even when things are not necessarily going our way, even when we don't understand the situation, just like these ladies didn't understand, you know, why he had to be crucified. We was having such a great time with him and seeing everybody healed and, and all the blessings that were being poured out and, and, and everybody felt that he was going to set up his kingdom at that time. They didn't understand, but they were faithful. They were devoted. They were loyal. His command has not changed, church. What's his command? Follow me. Follow me. Smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. But these women were devoted. They, they grabbed on to what the Lord had said. They grabbed on when he said, follow me. And they were following him all of the way. Hallelujah. Thank God for our ladies today. Secondly, we can see another desired trait in women who followed Jesus. They were dedicated. They were not only devoted, they were dedicated. Dedicated means devoted to a task, having single-mindedness, uh, having single-minded loyalty or integrity. So not only were women among the last ones at the cross, they were the first ones at the tomb. Even though their master was gone, come on, help me out, church, their loyalty remained. Even though their master had died, their loyalty had remained. They was coming to the tomb. They were preparing spices. They were doing all these things because their loyalty would remain. Uh, Mark chapter number 16 and verse number 1. It says, And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and uh, Salome had brought sweet spices that might, that they might come and anoint him, anoint Jesus' body. And, the very, and very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came under the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. So they began uh, out as he was uh, going up Golgotha's hill, and now here they are uh, uh, just uh, taking care of him even after he has passed away. They were the first ones at the tomb. Even though he was not walking and talking with them, they were dedicated to him. They were dedicated to him. Let me give you a question. Who is, who, is, who is it most times that gets up every couple hours with their child when they're running a fever? It typically leans toward the mama. I'm not saying that daddies don't do that too. But it, it typically leans toward the mom. It's usually mama with a single-minded loyalty, with a devotion to her task, with no thought of herself, it's mama, amen? As she goes to check the temperature, as she's devoted, as she's loyal, as she's devoted to the task that is at hand, she's dedicated. God has called each of us as followers of his son to be dedicated to the purposes that he has called us to. He's called each and every one of us to be dedicated, to be dedicated to the task. He has called us to put him first above our family, above our finances, even above our fears. Amen? He's promised us that we won't come out on the short end of the stick in the end. Sometimes we feel like as believers, well, I, I mean, man, I'm just being stepped on every time I turn. I, I tell you what, I, I just really sometimes want to unleash on somebody. 
Can I get a witness? I mean, that's the flesh. That's the flesh. But Scripture lets us know, it makes us aware that whatever we do for the Lord is going to be rewarded. Hallelujah. We talked about that uh, on Wednesday night on, on the video. But everything is going to be rewarded. So no church, that anything that you do for the Lord is not going to be overlooked. And you're not going to come out on the short end of the stick, so to speak. God is seeing things. He's taught us to be a servant instead of being self-serving. He's taught us to give, and it will be given back, right? He's taught us that even when we think we're losing in life, we're actually gaining. He said, if a man loses his life, he's going to gain it. To the human psyche, that doesn't compute. But in in God's economy, in God's world, in the kingdom of God, that it makes perfect sense. Mark 10 and verse 29 and 30 says, And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that have left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. But he shall receive a hundredfold now, Scripture says. I don't believe in just being rewarded over there. I said, I believe I can be rewarded right here. Oh, hallelujah. He said a hundredfold now. Hallelujah. I don't give to get. I don't say, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give my tithe or I'm going to give this offering because I want God to bless me. How many knows we just give because, and we know we have the mindset that God's going to bless us, that God's going to help us or whatever that may be, whatever we do for him, God's going to bless us. He said a hundredfold now and this time houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands, but notice, with persecutions and in the world to come, eternal life. Hallelujah. He's called us to be dedicated, church. He's called us to be dedicated regardless of the situation. Not only has the Lord called us to be devoted and dedicated, but he's called us to declare. He's called us to declare. The word declare by definition, Webster's definition is to make known. To make known. Also, to communicate plainly to others with words. Not just um, by symbols, not just uh, by gestures, but with plainly with words, Scripture says. He's not called us to just wear a cross necklace. He's not called us to only have a Jesus bumper sticker or honk if you love Jesus. Amen? Amen. He's not called us just to those things, but he's called, he, there comes a time when we must declare who he is and why we're following him. Amen. Amen. When everybody else is backing away, when everybody else is going with the flow or going with the crowd, uh, church, he's called us to declare him. Hallelujah. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When everybody else is bowing down, we're the, one, we're the ones to be standing up for him. Said, oh, I know Jesus. And he's the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. Hallelujah. Church, not everybody that you tell about Jesus is going to receive what you're saying. Amen. I mean, and a new Christian can definitely fall in this place, but older ones as well. But you all fired up, and man, I just can't wait to go and tell somebody about the Lord. And and you go and tell somebody, and they just blow you out of the water, so to speak. Or they blow you off. Or they, uh, uh, they don't take you, they take you as a grain of salt, so to speak. Jesus didn't tell us to get hung up on the results. Amen? He said, go ye into all the world. He didn't say go until your feelings get hurt. Oh, come on, church, don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. He didn't say go until your feelings got hurt. No, he said, go ye. Go ye, go ye, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. The gospel has to be with words most definitely and with action. The women in this uh, uh, story and women in general have been bold in spreading the gospel since the resurrection. Matter of fact, they were the first to declare that he's alive. (laughs) It's neat. It's neat how this is all brought out in scripture look at Matthew 
This is my last scripture. But Matthew 28 and verse number 5. I pray you brought your gospel gun with you, your Bible with you. Matthew 28 and verse number 5 says, And the angel answered and said unto the women, they are at the sepulcher, they're at the tomb, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here. <laughs> he is not here, for he is risen as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples, what? Word. They went to declare him. Hallelujah. He, he said, uh, the angel said, go and tell the disciples. Well, they boldly went to tell the disciples. And, and guess what? What did, the, what did the disciples say when the women come to tell them that Jesus is alive? They went, and I'm going to put it in today's terms, okay? You done flipped your lid. I, that's, that's, that sounds crazy. That's nonsense is the word that lines up with uh, today's word. That's nonsense. There, there, there's just no way. Scripture in the um, uh, King James Version says it was like idle tales to the disciples. Let me tell you, when you declare Jesus, some people are going to call you crazy. I said, when you tell them that I, I'm serving a guy that been, has been crucified on a cross and, and risen to new life, or, 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 you know, he died for three days and he came back to life, they're going to say, you're crazy. There's a lot of them that's going to say that. There's going a lot of them that's going to say, do you really believe that? Do you really believe that stuff? Some will say, that's just a story. He didn't rise from the dead. Let me tell you, saints, today we've got to keep proclaiming. Today you've got to keep declaring. Amen. It doesn't matter what other people are saying. It doesn't matter if our word, if we think our word is being accepted or not. The Lord said, follow me. And the Lord said to declare, hallelujah, His works, His word, His ways, His gospel. Go, in, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Tell every creature that Jesus saves. Church, we've got to be about His business. These women were about His business. Every one of us, whether we're female or whether we're male, we're to be about God's business. And he understands it's just as important today as it was then. It's just as important today that we keep proclaiming Jesus could come back today. We could be in Beulah land, as the song says, even today or even tomorrow. But people still have a chance to make it to heaven. We've got to proclaim the gospel. We've got to tell them that Jesus saves. Church, be faithful. Be faithful no matter what people are saying, no matter how you feel, no matter if somebody hurts your feelings. Sometimes we're going to get our feelings hurt. I've had my feelings hurt many times. But the thing is, we got to ask the Lord to help us and to keep on keeping on. Hallelujah. Let it be like fire shut up within your bone that you can't help but tell people that Jesus saves. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for these saints that are listening. I thank you for everyone that is listening, uh, by the way, of Facebook right now in many different places. Father, I thank you for their faithfulness, their desire to hear your word, to receive your word. And Father, right now as we search our own hearts, as each and every one of us here, as each and every one listening, Lord, we search our own hearts. Lord, we ask you that you would first of all forgive us for we have miserably failed. Lord, your word says if a man says he has no sin, he's a liar. So Lord, we have sinned and fallen short of your glory. And we, Lord, we ask that you would help us to do better in the days ahead. Help us, Lord God, to stand tall for you. Help us, Lord God, to be devoted. Help us to be dedicated. Help us to declare, 
Lord, what it is that you have placed on our hearts to declare. Lord, we may not even know at times what we're going to say to somebody. But Lord, under the unction of the Holy Spirit, under the direction of the Holy Spirit, Lord, you'll be telling us, go and speak to that individual. And sometimes just starting off like a casual conversation. But Lord, you can lead us into a deeper work. Help us to declare you and declare what you have done and declare who you are. Father, we just ask you would help us as believers to be bold and not back up. Lord, not back up on you, but to be devoted, to follow you from start to finish, to stand with you through the years and through the ages. That, Lord, we can be like the Apostle Paul. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Hallelujah. Father, I pray if there's one that is listening that does not know you as Lord and Savior, I pray right now as their heart is being convicted, as they are being challenged, Lord, I pray, Lord, that they would ask you to forgive them of their sins and come into their heart and change their life. Lord, we can't change without your help. Father, we ask, Lord, that you would save those, Lord, that are crying out right now. Lord, you said if we believe and we confess, you as Lord, and that we're sinners and that we need you, that you would save us. It doesn't take fancy words. It doesn't take being in a church house. All it takes is us and you, Jesus. Father, have your way. Lord, draw us closer to you. Help us to be more faithful as the days roll on. Help us to be about your business in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. Amen.